Did you know as Thunderbird you can actually double the speed of your healing? All you have to do is once you get healed by your first Kona station, just pick it up and then place it back down again. Once it's done regenerating, it's actually going to double the speed of your healing compared to if you just let it regenerate normally. And that's just the first trick out of 35 defenders and the next trick is actually going to be for Tuberal. So as Tuberal, a trick a lot of people don't know is you can actually disable claymores on the other side of windows. All you have to do is come up to the window, you want to go to one buckle, two buckle, three buckle, four. Now I'm joking. Just go to number three and then you want to move your crosshair just a little bit to the left until you see this little brown spot and then just move your crosshair down a little bit to the left like right about there then you want to punch the window like that and it's going to create a little then it's going to create a little breakage in the window and then you want to just punch it again to the left or wherever so now you punch it twice you can vault through it but the next step is actually throw your two brow device somewhere in this general area i just like to throw it right there and once you throw it all you got to do is jump out the window and as you can see the claymore that was here is not going to be going off so i can just throw down my two brow device jump out the window and if someone was like droning over there just kill them you don't want to do this when someone's kind of watching or in the general area of the window because they're just going to see the freeze go off and be ready for you to jump out so smoke is an operator where there isn't really any tricks to his ability other than like crazy lineups that you can do but i didn't want to show those just because it's more specific to the map or the site but the trick that i'm going to be talking about for smoke is actually pushing through your smoke grenades you always got to remember that smoke can actually walk through its own smoke grenades without taking any damage so a lot of the times the attackers are going to get caught off guard when you peek through your smokes and also you got to think about the noise canceling it does it's going to mask the sound of you walking up so you can always catch an attacker off guard by walking through your own smokes so as mute if i hear somebody place a nomad on the other side of a window you can actually place your mute jammer on this side of the window and as you can see once i jump out of this window the nomad is going to be muted now keep in mind if it's on the top it's not actually going to be muted but if you just listen for the sound, you can tell if it's muted from the other side. Another way you can mute nomads is if you look right here, there is a nomad right there. So what I can do to silently mute it and silently get rid of it is just place my mute jammer right there and then I can walk by it. Now that's going to be basically silent. So if they were like somewhere over near here, they obviously aren't going to hear me placing down a mute jammer. So you can actually do the same exact thing with claymores similar to two brow. If I just place my mute jammer on this side of the window, prep it like this, jump out. As you can see, the claymore is muted. And the thing is, is this is even more silent than tube row, and it's even less noticeable. So you can catch a lot of people off guard by doing this. So a castle barricade takes nine punches to break down, but as a defender, you can actually use this to your advantage. If I punch this barricade eight times, all I have to do is punch it once more and I can catch my enemy off guard. So a trick you can do with castle is to punch your barricade eight times and if you hear somebody on the other side or you have somebody on a cam you can just punch it once more swing them and get a kill on them just make sure if you do prep a castle barricade like this you actually use it because otherwise it's just a waste of your utility so as pulse going below somebody and throwing a c4 on the floor and blowing them up is obviously a good play but i feel like people get too focused on trying to get right below them and throwing the c4 right below them when in reality you don't always need to do that so if i know that they're pushing the main wall outside of armory I can just go into supply, go right here, shoot a hole in the floor like this, shoot like one hole in the barricade. Now, if I go into my scanner, I can check where they are. I see they're there. Boom, I can throw a C4 through the hole like that and blow it up. I'm not right below them because I obviously can't get right below them. But as you can see, the C4 is still going to work. If you, if you throw through windows of barricades, you can get a lot of kills like that. So something a lot of people don't know with Doc is his stims actually have infinite range. So you can shoot down walls to actually help you get Doc stims through walls like that instead of, you know, let's just pretend I couldn't peek through there. I could just shoot through the wall and then stim them. But also I could be all the way back here and still stim them. Just got to line it up and it's going to hit them. So take advantage of the infinite range and also take advantage of your bay lift so you can shoot through walls to actually heal your teammates quicker and easier. So Rook is an operator with a very simple ability. You just place it and forget it. But there's two kind of tricks I want to talk about for Rook. And the first one is when you're holding angles, make sure you always have something that you're covered by and you're not just exposing yourself out. Because when you do get downed, as you see, if, if I'm sitting behind something, once I get downed, I'm gonna be covered by it so I can actually try to self-res. Another thing is, is if you listen, when I go to self-res, it makes a noise. You hear that coin tossing? It's a very loud sound that it makes when you're resing yourself, and a lot of attackers will hear that and start pushing you. So what you can do is ask your teammate just to shoot when you're resing yourself, and it's gonna just 
smash the sound cue of you rezzing yourself. So with Rook, make sure you're holding tight angles behind cover so that when you do get down, you can actually rez yourself behind cover. And also make sure you can at least have some sort of sound cue to try to block the sound cue of you rezzing yourself. So there's a lot of tricks to cap can, and there's a lot of different crazy spots you can place your cap cans, but I didn't want to get into the more map and site specific spots. So I'll be going over three like general ways you can use cap can, just some cool tricks that you can do. So the first one, probably the most well-known one is if you just place down a barricade and then you rip it down like this it's going to leave this outer part of the barricade still on the door then you just want to place your cap can on the doorway like this but when you're walking past it just covers it up a little bit more so there's a higher chance that someone's just going to walk through and not see it but another trick that you can do with cap can is a lot of people know about the strat that you can do where you punch the third panel and then you punch this panel and you can crouch through the barricade like that. But what a lot of people don't know is you can do that same thing, but place one of your capkins or two of your capkins on the other side. And when attacker goes through, they're not gonna see it because of the barricade. They go through and then they get hit by the capkin. Most likely they're gonna think that their teammates put this down or something like that. And when they walk through, they get hit with a cap can. And one last thing I'll talk about is which side to actually place your cap cans on. So if I was walking through this doorway, most of the time I'd end up peeking billiards like this. And so my crosshair is gonna be looking this way. So what you would wanna do is place your cap can on this side. So whatever doorway you're placing them on, remember to always place it on the correct side and think about where your enemy is going to be looking and then put it on the opposite side. So Tachanka is a very similar operator to Smoke in that both of their abilities work pretty similar, but there's two main differences to their abilities. Tachanka cannot walk through his own fire, whereas Smoke can walk through his own smoke. But the advantage that Tachanka gets is if I was Smoke and I wanted to smoke off this window, I have to peek and then throw my smoke at the window. Whereas Tachanka can actually bounce his fire off of different objects. So as Smoke, I would have to peek around the corner, throw my smoke and then activate it. But as to Chonka, I can just line my crosshair up with this thing right here, shoot my fire, and it lands right on the window. A lot of people aren't taking enough advantage of this, and this is one of the main advantages to Tachanka compared to Smoke. So as Jaeger, if I place one ADS right here, and a projectile goes through that drone hole, it has 10 seconds to regenerate before it can catch something else. And that noise you just heard is the noise of a regenerating and now can catch whatever is going to come to the drone hole. But a lot of people don't know that there's a trick that you can do to speed up this process. So if something comes with that drone hole like this, as soon as I see that pop up, I just immediately pick up my ADS and then put it back down. And there you go. You hear the noise. So it saves about like five seconds, six seconds, something like that. Whereas it usually takes 10 seconds to regenerate. So this can help you a lot because you only need one ADS to protect this drone hole most of the time. So now you can use your two other ADSs to maybe someone wants to place a shield right here. You can put two ADSs right here and it's gonna protect the shield much better. Instead of having to place two ADSs right here, you can only use one and you can just juggle it. And most of the time it's gonna be protecting the wall or whatever. So as Bandit, if I just place down my Bandit charges on the wall and let them sit there, most of the time they're going to get Twitch droned, EMP'd, whatever, and then the Heart Breacher is just going to open up the wall. So what you'll see from a lot of pro players, high rank players, whatever, is just place it down, pick it back up. So it really just comes down to the timing. So if I'm sitting right here on this wall and I hear this noise, I know the Thermite just got placed. So what I can do is just immediately place down my Bandit Charge, and now, even before the Thermite would blow up, as you can see, I'm gonna destroy it. This counters every Hard Breacher, and it's gonna be really hard for the attackers to counter you. So as Frost, most people when they're trying to place a Frost Mat under a window, they just go up to the window and place it normally like that. Now, that's obviously very common, and you're gonna see this a lot, and there's not really necessarily anything wrong with it, but as an attacker, it's pretty much ingrained into everyone's mind to just, as soon as they see a frost is on the board, when they jump into a window, just look down and shoot. Super easy to counter, and that's why you don't see a lot of frost kills most of the time. So what you can do to make it a little bit better is just go to the side of the window like this and place your frost mat like that. So now when I jump in, it's just gonna make it a little bit harder. As you can see, I shoot a few bullets like normal, and it doesn't shoot the frost mat immediately. But when an attacker jumps into the window, as you can see, they still get caught in the trap. But you pretty much never see this, but it, it works so well that it's going to catch a lot of people off guard. Most of the time, people are just looking straight down and then they shoot. But if you just look a little bit left, then obviously you're going to shoot. It's just a one flick to the left. But most people are so used to just having it in the middle that when they look down and shoot, they don't have the time to flick over to the side. So a trick a lot of people seem to not know for Valkyries, you can actually bounce your Valcams off of other Valcams to get them in spots that you normally can. So as you can see, when I throw my Valcam into a plant, it just breaks the plant. But what you can do is throw one Valcam like right here, and then bounce your other Valcam off of it, and it's gonna land in the plant and not break it. So now you have a super hidden Valcam, and if I just shoot this right here, 
and go into the about cam you can see a lot of areas you can get a lot of information and it's very hidden and you couldn't normally get it into that spot you can also use this to get your valve cams on top of things so if i wanted to get my valve cam on top of this i obviously can't just like throw it up there what you can do though is throw one valve cam there bounce it off like that pick the other one up now obviously this is a very bad valve cam but you obviously know what you could do with this and you can find a lot of your own spots so the next operator we have is caviera and you might be like well then why are you on jackal well as jackal basically if you don't know what jackal does if someone was in front of me, if they're running down this hallway, I, they would leave behind a footprint that Jackal can then track to get an exact ping on them. But there's one operator that actually counters Jackal and they can't see their footprints. And that is Caviera. Dude, that was tough. Well, as normal, Caviera's footsteps can be seen by Jackal. As you can see, there's red footprints all over the floor. But as soon as Cav activates her ability, as you can see, it's not creating any new footprints. And a lot of people don't know that. That's why a cab is one of the best roamers to counter Jackal because you can just flank around and move around and they're not going to see your footsteps until your ability goes away, which as you can see, it's going to continue to create new footprints. Echo's ability is usually used as plantanile, which is a very common way and a very good way to play Echo. But a lot of people don't realize you can play Echo aggressive and do some really cool tricks to get some free kills. So if your yokai drone goes outside, it has 10 seconds to get back inside. Now this used to be like three seconds or two seconds, but when you have 10 seconds, you can scout out a lot of information. So if I were to impact this wall right here, Go onto my echo drone and then just go onto the drone hole, jump it like this. I can now see anybody that's running out of spawn and then I can get off my echo drone and shoot them. Just make sure when you're going out of the drone hole, it has to jump onto something. So what I do is just spam X right as it's coming out of the drone hole and then you can jump. Because a lot of times when they come out of spawn, they're either going to shoot the default cam. They're going to look here, over there. They're usually not looking up at this wall. So if you just jump your drone out, you can see exactly where they are, if they're over there or if they're over here get a free kill another really good one is if you impact jacuzzi wall throw your echo down right there so what you can do is just drive your drone straight out see if someone's attacking dirt if they're placing down a breaching charge hard breach charge owner or whatever drive it back in run out and then you can get a kill so another really cool trick you can do with echo is if you come into this room impact this hatch right there once you blow it up just throw your echo drone down like this and then you want to run over to this door right next to it rip it down you can pretty much stand outside without being detected like right here i'm not being detected so now if anybody's running from this spawn i can freely kill them but to make it a little bit better you can use your echo drone jump it through the hatch like this, see where they are, see how close they are, see if anyone's even there, and then boom, free kill. So another trick that you can do with Echo, if you rip down a barricade on a window, throw your Echo drone like right about here, drive it up just a little bit, like right there, and then you barricade the door back, and then you go into your Echo drone, as you can see, it's pretty much outside. So you can get a lot of information like that. And once again, they spawn right over there. So they're going to be running through. What you can do is once they stop to shoot the default cam or whatever, you can just red ping them, like act like that was a red ping, pre-fire through the window. Or you can just have the window open, find out where they're running. If they're running like right next to the van, just come out, peek, and then kill them. So those are three ways you can get some free kills with Echo. Just make sure you have your other drone in sight so it can actually be used for information if you end up dying. And also this was just one map. You can use this on a lot of different maps. So keep that in mind. So as Mira, most of the time you place down your main Mira and that you're going to be playing most of the round. And then you just place a random one down that you aren't going to be using. But a trick a lot of people don't know is you can actually save one of your Miras to counter hard breachers. So it's very similar to Bandit. If you hear this noise, you know that someone just placed a thermite on the wall. So what you can do is just wait, you know, like the first 30 seconds of the round, whatever. Most of the time, that's when the thermite is going to place down their charge. And as soon as you hear it, I mean, as soon as you hear it, like, boom, just immediately place that down. And even when the thermite blows it up, as you see, you're going to catch it. So as Legion, if I place my Legion mine in the middle of the doorway, obviously the whole area gets covered. So anybody that walks into this doorway is going to get hit by the Legion mine. But if I just place my Legion mine in the doorway like this, the area of effect is obviously towards the middle. So anybody that walks through the door is still going to get hit. So always be placing your legion mines on the doorway. And also it's similar to Capkin in that whatever side that the crosshair is going to be, that's the side that you don't want to place it on. So at this doorway right here, obviously you're going to be peeking these angles first. So you would most likely see the legion mine if you place it right here. As you can see, it's pretty visible. But if I place it on this side, then obviously when I come around the corner, the last thing I'm going to be looking at is down there. So as Ella, most of the time people just end up placing their Ella mines on top of the doorway like that. Now that's not bad, but there's one problem with that is that they have to walk into the doorway to even get concussed. So something that you can do is either put down a castle barricade or just have it on a normal barricade 
throw your Elamine in the middle. Now, what I would also recommend is if you're going to do a castle barricade, punch it eight times. So it only takes one punch more. And then as soon as they punch it once, they're going to be concussed. And what you can do is wait for them to punch it down and sit behind something like this. And as soon as you see it go off, just swing out. So as you can see, Boom, I hear punched and then I can just swing out. So as Vigil, you counter two different tracking operators, that being Lion and Deimos. Now, a lot of people know that, but a lot of people don't know exactly how the interaction between the two operators work. So if I'm being tracked by Deimos, as soon as I, if I just activated my ability and then unactivate it, I just immediately, there's no more tracking. But if I'm being tracked and I wait for the ping to go off, as you can see, it goes gray as soon as I activate my ability. Then I can unactivate it again, activate it again, continue to get pings on them. When you can see that my ping lasts a second after I get it, so as you can see, it stays gray. Deimos, as soon as I activate my ability, the ping goes away from him. So if you ever get pinged by Deimos as Vigil, you can basically choose to get rid of the ping altogether, or you can kind of counter him and play aggressive and get a ping on him. So as for Vigil versus Lion, as soon as the Lion skin gets activated, all you have to do is activate your Vigil and you're not going to be pinged even once. So as Maestro, a trick that you can do is place your Maestro over a hatch like this. And once you've placed your Maestro over the hatch, then you can break the hatch. So it's going to make it much harder for the attackers to melee your Maestro because they have to run over the hatch and drop the hatch. And also, if you go onto the Maestro cam and look towards the wall, it's going to make it even harder, pretty much impossible to melee it. And then you can just turn it back and shoot them, do whatever. And then just remember to look back towards the wall. There's a lot of different spots you can do it. Like in 90 right here, you can place your maestro over top of this hatch and then break the hatch. It's pretty good ones on Villa on different maps, but this is a very good thing to keep in mind. So as alibi, one of the most common plays is to throw your alibi at a window, break a hole in it, and it looks like someone's peeking the window. But a problem a lot of people don't realize is if you don't place it right up against the window, I can easily easily shoot it. So what you can do is throw it right up against the window right about here and it's still going to activate but it's going to be right up against the window. So not only is your clone going to be more visible so it's going to be a higher chance of them actually shooting it but it's also impossible to shoot from the window like this. I think if they go upside down repel then they might be able to shoot it but that's still wasting like an extra like five to ten seconds so it still works out anyways. And if you want to try a different trick standing in your alibi clone like this actually works because I don't remember the last time I looked at an alibi clone and just shot it. Most of the time people aren't going to be shooting them in the higher ranks so if you just stand in one it's going to be one of the more satisfying kills you can get. So something a lot of people don't know about clash is you can actually stop people from repelling into a window all you have to do is stand up against the window they can't repel in but if you do back up and they try to repel in all you got to do is walk up against the window and it's going to stop the animation so as Cade, you don't actually have to place your Cade claw on the wall like this to get it to electrify you can place it below the wall above the wall or just in the general radius of the wall and that's why visual trajectory is basically buffed Cade. so if i wanted to electrify this wall a really cool spot that a lot of people don't know about is if i go right out here like this and just aim it like right about there I can just throw my Cade Claw right in there. It's going to electrocute both walls. And this is going to be really hard to spot. And you really wouldn't have been able to line it up that well without visual projectory. Or at least it makes it a lot easier. So if I wanted to electrocute the same wall from below, if I throw my Cade Claw right there, as you can see, it electrocutes both walls. So always remember, just as long as it's in the radius of the wall, it doesn't have to be on it. It can be below, above, outside anywhere as long as it's in the radius so a trick a lot of people don't know with mozzie once you've hacked a drone you can actually use it to sable claymores all you have to do is walk the drone up like this and then for a second for a period it's going to be you know going offline but then you can run out and as you can see the claymore isn't going to be working so warden has a very simple ability and the trick i'm going to be showing you is more of a tip and that's just preemptively use your warden glasses so if i see someone break this doorway down and I'm Warden, instead of just like sitting there waiting for a flash to come in, activate your glasses before anybody even throws a flash in. Because if they do end up flashing the doorway, it takes like one second and then another second to aim in. So instead of just, you know, waiting for the flash to come in, then activating your glasses and letting them get the jump on you, just activate it before any flashes come in because you have like 30 seconds of it. So make sure you just periodically and preemptively using your glasses. So most of the time, Goyos are placed on a barricade 
next to a barricade, something like that. Now, this is obviously great doing that, putting it on the barricade or next to the barricade. That's the most common way you'll see. But something people don't do enough is actually placing your Goyos onto the barricade. Because anytime the wall gets open, let's say there's a thermite on the other side of this wall. If they activate the thermite, it's going to blow up the Goyo as well, you know, stalling them out from entering from the breach. Also, another trick specific to this map for Goyo is if you break a hole in the floor right here like that, and then you run to the other side of the wall, place your Goyo right here. You can actually use an impact to break the Goyo from this side. All you got to do is do that. And when I run to the other side, as you can see, the fire went off. But always remember, you can place your Goyos on reinforced walls. So when the wall gets opened up, it stalls the attackers out from entering from the breach. So while Mai and Jaeger are very similar in that both of their abilities catch projectiles. But one of the differences between Wamai and Jaeger is Wamai's ability catches it and it still goes off whereas Jaegers actually destroys it. And I feel like people kind of forget that when they're throwing down their Wamai discs. If I throw a Wamai disc right here, yes, it's going to protect this area from any projectiles, but you got to remember that it's still going to go off. So if I have a teammate gadget right here, let's say I had a, a zombie right there. If someone throws a grenade into that area, as you can see, when it goes off, it destroys the other gadget. So a lot of times your teammates gadgets still end up getting destroyed by your Wamais. A much better spot is like over here by the window. So if they throw a nade through the window, it's gonna get caught and still only hit this area and you can still protect your teammates gadgets that are over here so as orcs everybody knows to run through soft walls to make rotates but a very underutilized tactic to orcs is using his ability to destroy soft counters like this so third floor on cafe the default plant spot for this site is right here behind this shelf so as orcs i can actually run through this shelf right here and destroy the cover from them planting and you can go along this whole area just running straight into it like that and destroying the cover the attackers are going to use because if you think about this site they have the skylight which is right outside of sight so if i try to play in this area as a defender i can't really do it at all because i'm just going to be shot from skylight so a lot of the times once the attackers end up getting the map control they start getting into piano into top white red cigar all this area once they start getting that and they start trying to go for a plant this area becomes theirs and they start using this bar as like cover so if you're oryx and you just run straight through this they're not going to be using this as cover and if they do then you can just shoot them it only takes about like 30 seconds or so to get rid of all this stuff you just gotta wait for you to regenerate breaths and then yeah you can just destroy this whole bar area and you can do this on other maps but this is probably the best example so as malusi a trick a lot of players don't know is if you make footholes in a wall like this as you can see i've already made the footholes i don't recommend running super 90 on malusi but if you can get your teammate to do this then that'd be much better then what you can do is place your malusi pretty distant from the wall you want to have it close enough to where it actually triggers when they're on the other side but you want to have it far enough so they can't shoot it as easy and so now you can see when they're on the other side they are going to be hit by the malusi but when i stand where she's standing i can't even shoot it when i'm crouching well i kind of can but most of the time they end up proning to kill it or they're just going to continue to walk through it and the thing is is it doesn't only work through the footholes obviously it still works when they get into sight so it's not like it's a horrible malusi it's just a little bit harder to destroy it can be used in two rooms instead of one usually so it's much better placement than normally placing it however you would at least want to have at least one of these per round in my opinion so the trick i'm going to be showing you for a rooney is going to allow you to make pretty indestructible bulletproof cameras so what you want to do is go to the opposite side of where you want to place your bulletproof camera so if i want to place my bulletproof camera on this wall i'd go to the opposite side then what you want to do is reinforce that wall that you want to place the bulletproof camera on then once you come around to the other side just place two punch holes in the wall you got to get them in the right spot and once you place them down you can place your bulletproof camera inside the hole. So now it's a little bit harder to shoot the sides of the bulletproof camera, but what you can also do is place your rooting gate over the bulletproof camera. So now it's gonna block any projectiles like ash charges, gun sixes, Zofia charges, anything like that, that's gonna come out your bulletproof camera to try to destroy it. And a mistake a lot of people will do when they're trying to do this is they place it in areas that they can't really cover. So an example, if I place my bulletproof camera on this wall right here, the attackers can destroy it much easier because it's such in an open area area where I can't really defend this area unless I'm playing in the hallway which you don't really want to be defending VIP from the hallway later in the round so a lot of the times it's going to get destroyed whereas this bulletproof camera they have to be in the site to destroy it and it can watch all this area it can watch the default plant if they plant on the pool table or if they plant behind the bomb so the trick i'm going to be showing you for thorn is going to help you hide your thorn traps while also increasing the chances of you getting a kill from your thorn traps so let's say i wanted to put a thorn trap on this door instead of putting it on like the top where it's super easy to get shot by a twitch drone or hacked by a brava drone or just shot from the window or whatever what you can actually do is shoot a hole in 
in the ground right here make sure you only use a few bullets because you only want one side of the floor to be destroyed so be careful with it so you don't destroy the other side then you want to throw your thorn trap in the hole like this then you want to get your barbed wire out and place it right on top of the thorn trap and make sure this black ring is kind of covering it so now it's super hard to see the only way you see it is if you like look real close you might be able to see metal beams or whatever but no one's going to be doing that so if they end up walking through the barbed wire they're going to be slowed down and also when they see the thorn trap go off they're probably going to try to sprint like straight over here so what you can do as well is throw another thorn trap right here so now once they sprint into this one they either have to run back over here or they have to run through the rotate and while all this is going on they can't be having their gun up so you could probably get a free kill on them. And it's going to be super hard to destroy this thorn trap. So it's much better than just throwing it in random spots like this. So a zombie is an operator where there's so many different creative tricks that you can do. So that's why the one I decided to go with is pretty simple. Because I didn't want to just go over some specific strat or whatever. Because there's so many different ones. So I'd be better off just making a separate video for a zombie strats or whatever. So the one that I decided to go with is just. If you place your zombie barrier on the top of a door. Attackers are going to have to crouch through this. Now most people watching this probably know that. But if you're a beginner and you're you're just wanting to play zombie that's a very good thing that you can do and it's a very common thing but i thought i didn't want to just choose one random strat because i'd rather just make a whole video about a zombie strats so as solace you can see whoever is planting a bomb as you can see you can see the diffuser and a lot of the times with solace you should be roaming and so if you ever find yourself above the site what you can do is pop your solar scanner see where they're going to be diffusing the bomb then you just got to get off of your solar scanner and you can either impact it or you can just straight up shoot through it because you can see exactly where they are. So there you go. You can see all you got to do is remember it's just a little bit above their head where the icon is. So Fenrir has five dread mines. So let's say I wanted to throw one on attic. I throw one top white, throw one big window, and then the last one throw at a breach. I don't even know if this works or not, but yeah, you throw it at breach. Now you have one left. Most people will be like, okay, just throw it on trophy door. While yes, that is a good idea because, you know, that's a very common push spot. It's the only spot that you're not covering with a Fenrir. But let's say they don't push Trophy Door. Now, the odds of that happening are pretty low, but you kind of get the example. And that's also, let's say they destroyed the white Fenrir. So now I have one in my pocket, I have one destroyed, and I have that one up, that one up, and that one up. If it's like 30 seconds left in the round, I know that they're not pushing Trophy. I can just replace this one, and now I can activate this one. Or, you don't even need to replace one, you could just throw it up later in the round. If they're not pushing trophy, I could maybe throw one on this window if I see someone's on that window. It's just kind of a flexible thing that you can do. You don't always have to throw down all five. You can kind of save one and be flexible with it. If you feel you improved from this video, or you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing. And if you want to watch more of my content, then click the video popping up on your screen.